Hello my friends, what we're going to do today is we're going to analyze an event. When something important happens in a person's life, we can analyze it to see what's really going on. What are the motivations? What is this change going to do to the person? So I'm going to share with you an event in my life. On July 15th, 2024, in the morning, I changed my name. <laughs> First time I've ever done this in my life. I changed my name from David Cochran to Santino Mancuso. I will still use my birth name, but very often I'm going to be using this new name. Now, we're going to analyze this to see three things. Are the reasons that I give, like I have a reasons, you know, I have reasons why I changed my name. People have reasons for an event, unless it's an accident, but you know, if it's an intentional event, we see if those are confirmed, because sometimes people are like fooling themselves. They they might, they might be wishful thinking. There might be something deeper and more important that's driving them. And even if it is true that the motivations are correct, we can add a new perspective, new insights, new, new, new understanding of exactly what's driving the person. And also, very often there are additional things going on that were not anticipated. So for example, someone gets married. Maybe they're very much in love and they get married. That marriage can bring things that they, they didn't know would happen. Maybe the married couple begins to travel more, becomes more socially active. Things can happen that you didn't uh, know were going to happen. And we can see that as well. Now, two points before I go into the analysis. We're going to be looking at motivations what the dynamics are, what the purposes are. We do not immediately jump into a symbolic language such as, oh, a name change, that's, this, that's an identity change, or, or just have looking at it symbolic. We want to see what, what does it mean to the person. A person can change their name for many different reasons. It might, well, you can imagine all the different reasons. I'll, I'll tell you my un, why I did it, and then we'll see if the analysis confirms it or shows some additional things. Uh, so we th I have it in bold at the bottom. We think of astrology as motivations. What is the motivation and purpose? Uh, and how does that direct and change my life? Number two, as you no doubt know, I use an evidence-based system of astrology and we are basing our ideas on the evidence. Controlled research studies provide uh, the greatest confidence and even if we're not extremely confident we use whatever we have the most confidence in these are principles of an evidence-based practice okay now I'm going to tell you why I changed my name if you're consulting a client you do not need to ask first you can if you want to it's not necessary but for teaching purposes here I'll tell you what why I think I'm changing my name. Then we'll see what the astrology says. So number one, just to give you a little background, it did not start out. I didn't wake up and say I'm going to change my name. What happened is I used to be on Facebook about a year ago. I left Facebook and or maybe it was a half a year to a year ago, whenever it was, quite a while ago. And I just left. It was just too much stuff going on, too distracting. Um, I wanted to be part of a a private group in order to be part of this private research group um, I had to rejoin Facebook well I decided to rejoin with a phony name but I thought of a name that I really like um, my mother's maiden name is Mancuso and I had been thinking a lot about St. Francis maybe that got me into the Italian mood or something and the name Santino just popped in my head and it wow Santino Mancuso I like it so that's what happened. I just wanted to do that. And then a few days later, or, well, the next day and uh, carrying on for a couple of days, I just was feeling like more and more that I want to separate from my old way of life up until about a year ago when I changed things. And um, so on the morning of July 15th, I decided to change my name and I had already picked out the perfect name. So that's what happened. Um, now, these are the changes that I had in mind for, for why I'm changing my name. 
I want greater distance from the environments that I used to be in for decades, my whole adult life, been involved in astrology, and astrology is most, mostly based on personal experience and, and traditional ideas. I don't really want to be primarily involved in that. I want to, point number two, I want to work more with the data science. Astrology, data science applied to astrology is what we call cosmic cybernetics. Everybody knows it's important to me, but why am I living in a world where I have to keep explaining myself and people are working in a different style? So I just want to move into uh, an environment where people think and approach things in the same manner. Um, so uh, really distancing myself from that and and also three, uh, traveling less, becoming more reclusive, building bonds with very dear loved ones. So just kind of um, pulling away, doing this more serious, analytical work, um, and, and less speculation and belief systems and so on. Um, or kind of the anecdotal evidence that's a foundation for research. I've done that for half a century, you know, been there, done that, let's build this now pyramid of knowledge using more, uh, using modern research methods. So what kinds of things might go on? Saturn could be involved because of simplifying and honesty, perhaps Mars Saturn specifically, because I want to work hard. I just want to tackle these problems, uh, kind of reclusive, um, Maybe my 33 and 99 vibe would be involved because of discovery, although that's not so much on my mind. I mean, I, well, in a way it is. Yeah, I want to make the discovery, but I think the discoveries are just going to require a lot of analysis. Um, it's not like, boom, just things appearing, but to figure out this stuff. Uh, and 7 and 21 vibe, I have a... Um, I know my chart, so I know I have a Sun, Trine, Moon, and Seven vibe. Maybe that's getting triggered. Uh, also emphasizing focus and seclusion. And I always think of 19 vibe when a person reconfigures, when a person has like an alter ego, or they restructure their lives, or they reframe their lives. Very often 19 is involved. And since this is involving... Uh, my name, family name, using, interestingly, using my mother's last name instead of my father's, these different traditions. And when I grew up as a kid, it was my mother's family was in the area, the Mancuso. So it's um, like drawing a different um, lineage, you know, a different uh, history. So that's the moon and bringing it to the present. So maybe things like that. These are some of the things I might might be going on, but I'm not going to look at that. Here's what I do. I run the vibrational astrology forecast in the Sirius astrology software, um, and I set the values to 4 and 14. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's pull up my chart. Okay. Um, okay, so here's my chart, and I ran this vibrational astrology forecast and uh, well, if you're curious, you just go to forecast, vibrational astrology forecast, you make some selections. And if I go down to, I ran it for the month of July. Oh, this is with four and three. I'm going to change this to four. I just right clicked and brought up the settings. And I have it for starting July 1st for one month. And four maximum or, but I'm going to set it to two weeks. What this means is it's going to show only transiting planetary configurations that are very exact and last a very long time. These are the most powerful transits, according to the theory. These should be the most conspicuous things going on. And on July 15th, the day that I made the change, I have two things. Sometimes there's nothing happening. If you scroll up and down... I think we just saw, oh, at the end of the month, see, there's nothing. Um, but on July 15th, there happened to be two. N means natal, T means transit. So transiting Saturn was activa activating my sun and moon, and transiting Neptune 
uh, was activating Sun and Saturn. So the Saturn activating Sun and Moon is in 21 vibe, and Neptune activating Sun and Saturn is in 53 vibe. 53 is a prime number. So those are the two big things going on, long-lasting big things. So that energy is strong at the time of the name change, and it, they're strong for a long time, for at least two weeks. It starts up, both of them on July 6th are there, and both of them are there until da, 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 the 21st. Uh, the 53 vibe continues on past that. So these are major themes in my life, and they're going to be part of what's going on with any important event at this during that time period. And July 15th, right in the middle of that very, very strong configuration. In fact, it tells me that the Saturn aspecting Sun and Moon in 21 vibe has no orb. <laughs> Saturn's exactly on my Sun and Moon in 21 vibe. And the other one, Neptune on Sun and Saturn, has a one degree orb. That's in the vibrational chart. I mean, this is incredibly tight. So very powerful things. What does it mean? Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Um, to understand what it means, it helps to also look at the chart to see what else is going on. So I'm going to look at my 7 vibe and 21 vibe, and I'm going to do a by wheel of the name change to the natal. Let, let me show you that. So here is the chart for the name change. July 15th, 2024, in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I live. And what happened is at 9.20, 9 hours, 20 minutes, and 36 seconds, I just said to myself, yeah, my name is Santino. I just was it. Let me, and fortunately, I was at my computer, you know, I was just getting into doing stuff. Okay, let me do the chart. So I have a really good time, probably within about 10 seconds or so, of, of when I just said, yeah, this is my name. <laughs> okay, so this is great astrologically. So we're going to look at my 7 vibe. Here's the 7 vibe for July 15th in the morning when I make the name change and I'm going to do a by wheel. Oh, I didn't select these ahead of time. Oops, I'll select them now. I'm going to select a by wheel uh, with my natal in the inner ring and the name change in the outer ring. This is 7 vibe to 7 vibe and we see that my sun is trying my moon. There's my moon at 14 degrees Virgo, sun at 14 degrees Capricorn, and Saturn conjunct the sun. Almost exactly, in 7 vibe. So Saturn is in 7 vibe, or people call it a septile, or biceptile, or triceptile, or 7th harmonic, to my sun, and trying my moon in the 7 vibration chart. Okay, now we can look at it in 21 vibe. So I'll go to by wheel, and I'll select my 21 vibe in the inner ring. And in 21 vibe, it's going to appear as transiting Saturn is now conjunct the sun and moon, all within one degree. In fact, it's within about a half a degree. So there it is. If you're familiar with how vibrational charts change as you go to what we call overtones, we triple from seven to 21, then anything that's in a trine collapses. Now, uh, so Saturn's on my sun and moon. To see if anything else is involved, I go back. I'm doing this quickly. Um, I, I explain these concepts a lot in other videos. So um, I can go... So if, you, if you're not following all of it, at least you'll get the, 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 the fundamental concept. I'm going to go back to the natal chart. Um, and I'm going to see that my sun and moon are in the seven in the 21 vibe chart they're trying saturn and square uranus okay um, and actually all this is very simple if you feel like your eyes are glazing over because you're not familiar with it, it's very very simple all we did is triple the 7 to 21 and then we'll look as you zoom into these higher vibrations you're seeing more detail you're seeing ref more refined intricate things that are going on and what we're finding out is that in my 
a 21 vibe, Sun and Moon are conjunct, we knew that, and they're tightly trying Saturn and square Uranus. So now if I go back to this bywheel and I see that Saturn is conjunct Sun and Moon, I know that it's also trying natal Saturn and square Uranus. What's particularly interesting here is both Saturns are involved. My natal Saturn is involved. The orb is larger. It's a two-degree orb. What's exact is Saturn on the Sun Moon. So here's how we interpret it. I have Sun Moon trying in the seven vibe. That means something. Saturn sitting right on it, like exact, almost exact, at the time of the name change. That is timing the name change. That's the critical thing. What's critical is what's happening at that moment. At that moment, if I time adjust this and I move it a few hours forward and backward, you'll see this orb gets, it gets weaker. So I won't bother doing that, but it, it's happening right around that time. And there's a tone of natal Saturn on the sun moon as well. So when it aspects my sun moon, sun, my sun and moon are also square Uranus, trine Saturn. What does it all mean? Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so here I explain. I looked at the bywheel. Interpretation. Here's the interpretation. I have a quiet, introverted side. That's what sun, trine, moon, and seven vibe means. A very strong, quiet, introverted side. It's strong. It's clear. There's no doubt about it. Is that true in real life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, now, it may not be my only side when I'm, when I'm speaking like this and you know, very expressive and spontaneous and whatever, you're not seeing my sun trying moon in seven vibe when, when I'm speaking. If you see me at home for hours at my computer and at my books and nobody around, you know, and you'll see that the seven vibe listening to Baroque music and all this kind of very quiet, meditative, uh, removed space, Sun, trine, moon, and seven vibe. It's a side of me. That's what's getting activated when I change my name. What does that mean? That means my name change is about that part of me. And Saturn is on the sun and moon. Saturn's the decision maker. And Saturn is saying, this is where you're going. This is what you're going to be. This is what we want to do. This is the part of you that we need to bring out. Because we have so many potentials, so many possibilities, so many things that we can do. That's why if you went to college, you decide what to major in. You know, you, we're constantly, should I live here? Should I live there? We have more potential than we can express. Transiting Saturn is not this big, bad, malefic. It decides, it, it, it cuts out things. So now I know what the name change is about. And my sun and moon in the seven vibe are trying Saturn. Oh my God, it's about going into my reclusive side. What did I say my motivation was? To become more reclusive. What the transits are telling me is, oh my God, you're becoming like really reclusive, like really deep. You're really trying to get this mastery, this quiet, deep mastery thing is really, really strong. Well, I knew that's why I was doing it. But did I realize it was that strong, that conspicuous, and that that's what is really happening? Kind of, but it's made it much clearer that this is that this is what's happening. So, uh, so whether I'm conscious of it or whether I intend it, the name change is like growing up from being a child to being uh, who is relatively noisy, undisciplined, to an adult who has mastery, depth, humility, sincerity. Uh, and, but also, here's the negative side, less exuberant and buoyant. So this is not a flashy, light name change. And that's what I said. I wanted to get away from all this anecdotal evidence, blah, 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 blah. It's much more deeper and profound than maybe I had even realized. Now, here's another interesting thing about it. The sun and moon. If you think about the sun and moon as energy processes, as motivations, not as a symbolic language, oh, moon is the mother and blah, blah, blah. What do they mean? Sun, moon combinations, what they actually mean directly, consistently, 
is it's about bringing our personal history, our childhood, our ancestry, our genetics, our past, into concrete and visible expression. That's what sun moon actually means. Much more than all these other things you hear, which are just symptoms of it and possible expressions. But always it's about that. Name change. The name change I select from my personal and ancestral past. I have literally chosen to highlight my mother's ancestry, her last name, rather than my father's. Not for not because I want to emphasize the mother or whatever. It, I just like the name. Man, so I just it's cool. I dig it. I just I feel it's really cool. I just the whole thing just feels right. So when we think of the motivations and intentions of the planets and the intentions of the vibrations, then we see what's in our lives. That, that very often these transits are like so incredibly literally true. Like, wow, that's exactly what's happening. So getting to the actual energy process gets to the actual thing that's happening without floundering around looking at a bunch of symbols. Okay, what I'm going to do next is discuss another transit, which is a 53 vibe. I'm at 21 minutes. I'm going to stop here. And in part two, we'll look at the next thing, because there's like several things going on. Let's do these one at a time. In the next video in this series, I'll describe what does 53 vibe, that Neptune was so tightly on my Sun and Saturn 53 vibe, that would actually mean something? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like totally important. I'll discuss that in the second video in this series on analyzing an event to understand what the dynamics and motivations are. Thank you very much, my friends. God bless. Namaste.